call the meeting of the Finance Committee to order. Sorry I was late, but I had to park in Belmont tonight. <laughs> Finding a parking space. Gloria, when we, can we get back to the police station? Next year. Next year, okay. And, and when we move into the police station, we will have a projector, a digital projector, we will actually be able to use for anything. Okay. Okay, uh, minutes. I'd like to add an item to the practice uh, towards the end. Long term stabilization fund voted $100,000. That's approximately two million in it. Okay, should that be like after Harry Barber? Are there any other corrections? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any other corrections? Okay, all those in favor of accepting the minutes is corrected. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Okay, we have our, our new, hopefully almost done warrant. Uh, at the FinCom suggestion, they moved the uh, CPA articles together. So you have the appropriation and then you have the uh, resolution on their long-term plan. Uh, and one or two articles were deleted, so it's a little longer than, uh, I think last year we had 46. Now we got 60, so there's 14 more articles. I think almost all of them are zoning. Uh, so not our, not our problem, as they say. Uh, I talked to town council about the uh, lobbying article. Um, the selectmen are having a hearing. The promoter of the article has refused to come before us because uh, he basically doesn't think it's any of our business. Uh, so uh, I think we'll see what the selectmen do and then we'll decide if we want to take a position on it. Uh, on that, he wasn't going to get into the First Amendment quite yet, but uh, a lot of it depends on what, what the promoter sponsor of the article wants to exactly do. Uh, I talked to Dan Dunn tonight, and there are, on the Minuteman Regional Agreements, there are seven, seven out of seven yeses. So the seven towns that have taken it up so far, seven have voted yes. So, you know, that's pretty good news, I think. Uh, and as you see with the updated uh, hearing calendar from Gloria, we, uh, we're getting things scheduled. The one thing which is a little bit up in the air is the uh, Community Preservation Act recommendations. Now, this is going to be different, for example, from the capital budget. Uh, Capital budget comes before us, uh, they make the recommendation, and the motion on the floor of town meeting is actually that of the finance committee. The fact that they're identical and that the, uh, <coughs> the chair of the capital budget committee actually makes the presentation in front of town meeting is still a finance committee recommendation. Uh, with the Community Preservation Act, it is different. It is a fourth reporting body. So, I'm still a little unclear on a few things. In other words, they, they'll propose before us. Uh, we could make recommendations to them. Whether we could make actually, uh, I suppose we can make, you know, recommend the, uh, changes to the motion that's presented on the town meeting floor. I'm still un unclear about, but I'll, I'll continue to look at that. One of the problems is that um, 
the whole startup mechanism, the startup process for the Community Preservation Act committee is a, a little slow this year. Um, they, they've got you know people representing all different committees that are meeting at all different times, and like now they've got two meetings scheduled in March, the whole month. So they had proposed to come to us in April sometime, and I said, we're finished by April, so I'm trying to get them to come sometime in mid-March, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, you've seen the uh, snow and ice. So right now we have approximately uh, 120, a little short of $120,000 left tonight. I think with half of February and all of March, that should be plenty of money, so cool. We'll see how that goes. But there, we're far ahead of where we were last year. I think we're one quarter of the snowfall um, as of last year at this time. Okay. Was there a snow and ice hand up? Yes, sir. Thank you. It's uh, Corey, should we give it to you? It's this. Here. Here. Thank you. Okay, so the uh, meet and greet with the new deputy town manager uh, will be tomorrow uh, from 3 to 5. Um, so I urge you to come if you have an opportunity and meet the new deputy. and. Uh, um, I, I think you'd be very uh, pleased with him. He has a great deal of expertise and background in municipal government. And who knows, they might even have some nibbles to eat. Okay, so I think right now, seven forty-six, almost precisely on target. Uh, we have before us the transfer of town property, which is Article 30. Make your presentation on what the heck you're trying to do. Uh, well, those of you that are town meeting members know what I usually stand for. I put warrants before town meeting. Uh, back around 2000, my first involvement was Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40B, but my involvement was three paragraphs. 20, 21, 22, about four, 23. Uh, and that has to do with affordable housing. Everybody thinks of Chapter 40B as the affordable housing law. No, it's the district planning law for the entire state of Massachusetts, and I'm only involved with those few <coughs> paragraphs that have to do with affordable housing. Around <coughs> 2002, uh, I saw that the town of Weymouth had escaped 40B, not because they had 10% of the units in the town affordable, but because one and a half percent of their total land area was occupied by affordable housing. It went through the Housing Appeals Committee, it was ruled that their number was okay, and they did not have to accept the 40B if it wasn't in the town's best interest. Uh, at that time, I went and did a little study of Alley. It takes a little while to get through all the records. But at that time, it appeared that Allington was well over 1.5%, which I saw as a protection against unreasonable development. Uh, but before the selectmen, they were delighted to hear that. Uh, and then we started playing with the numbers. Between the planning department and my numbers, they were ups and downs all over the place. I went off and ran a state campaign to repeal 40B, and they kind of stayed away from it. I got back into it a couple of years ago because the numbers have changed. And the position of the planning board was we were a few acres shy of the one and a half percent. Since then, I've been dueling between the planning department, Department of Housing and Community Development, uh, the 
state secretary uh, because of things going on within the regulations, how things are counted, and we're still disputing some of the properties. Uh, there's a couple of them here in town that I picked up because they were deed restricted to remain affordable because they were bought with uh, grant money. Uh, when they got resold, uh, they were supposed to stay affordable. They somehow disappeared. They got into a dining group with the chief counsel at DHCD. Uh, it's still in dispute. I said, you know, the deed went forward with the prior restrictions. It's still affordable. I say, no, no, all the proper paperwork wasn't filed, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's up to the council to deal with. Right now, uh, a number is so close to one and a half that we'll have a tough time working with it as far as, and some of you may be interested in what's going on in East Island with the MUGAP project. We should, by rights, if we are at one and a half percent, either approve it with conditions that are acceptable to the town, the people down there, or absolutely deny it. I guarantee you the developer will take it to the Housing Appeals Court, that's the way they work it. Uh, the individual that they have as their counsel in going this forward, uh, I've dueled with him for a while. He's in the business of 40 B type development, basically. And he wants us to move as fast as we can, deny it, and then he can take it to the Housing Appeals Committee. Well, what's the rush? Well, because he has a track record with Housing Appeals Committee, and it doesn't hurt that his ex-partner is one of the members of the Housing Appeals Committee. So we're dealing with a stacked deck over there. I would prefer to have the numbers firmly in place. Land transfer. Mount Gilboa belongs to the town of Allen. My pitch is, okay, and if you read the Warren article, we turn it over to the Housing Authority, deed restricted in perpetuity as affordable housing. I pick up two acres of land on my calculation, and Arlington is at 2.2% of our available land area is already devoted to affordable housing. And that's the point of the article. Do I have opposition to affordable housing? No, I've had two le pieces of legislation before the state legislature seeking to increase the number of units that have to be provided by a developer to make it eligible for 40 B. Uh, we don't we don't make progress with 40 B. It's 49 years old, 27 years old, uh, and if you look at the numbers. We're, no, we're not producing affordable housing. We all know affordable housing is a crisis in the state. Why aren't we afford, are producing affordable housing? The law is weak and efficient. There's no other laws in the country like it. With 47 out of 50 states in affordable housing, the legislature, which I appear before regularly, has not moved any bills to fix that law. And that was the reason I tried to get it repealed in 2010. Uh, it's a, it's a, a heavy-duty job. I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to see Arlington off the hook. Uh, that we can dictate what we want in the way of development, and they can't afford it. Does Arlington have enough affordable housing? I don't think you ever have enough affordable housing, to tell you the truth. <coughs> All you do is look at the numbers. Arlington today has as many public housing units as all, like, the only exception is 11 other towns that have more units of housing uh, than we have. They're all cities. None of them use four feet. On a per capita basis, if you take the number of affordable units, uh, the uh, public housing units we have here in Arlington, we're number one in the state. We have more public housing units per capita than any other city or town. In the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're one of, the, one of a number of towns that have put in inclusionary zoning, that anything built over six units, you have to have a, an affordable component. And we've also, in our bylaws, said you build in our town, you have to place the affordable units in perpetuity. 
kind of trying for 10 years to get the state <coughs> legislature to accept that, yeah. equally trying to get the state legislature to institute some of the other things that we've done here and now. Uh, on a per capita basis, we have more Section 8 housing than any other city or town. <coughs> That's, you know, we can't count those. But we've done great things for affordable housing. We, we authorized the Housing Corporation, which has done wonderful work, <coughs> creating affordable units. We're not going to make 10%. There is no way Arlington can make 10% unless you canonize Massachusetts Avenue. Right now, we need over 4,000 units of housing, affordable housing, to make that number. You can't do it. There's only 20 or 25 percent of every 40 B is affordable unit component. The other 75, 80 percent is market rate. One step forward, three steps back. So that's why I placed this Warren article. Uh, I was saying, why do I have to come before the finance committee? There's no money involved. We're just going to transfer it. But I guess you folks want to know what these articles are about. So if you have any questions, that's my mission. And it's not going to be easy because it has to go before town meeting, and if I recall, we need three quarters to get passed on a transfer of property. I can't recall positively. Right now, is that um, under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission or the Parks and Rec? That's that's a, a Article 97 in the Massachusetts State Constitution says you can protect property. Yeah. And when I worked with uh, Doug Hines, the uh, town council, he said, well, this is a desirable thing. Well, what are we going to do about Article 97? And there's some question as to how we can do that. I guess he consulted with the town manager and some other people and said, well, look, we can place that same kind of restriction on an equal-sized piece of property in the land we have in Lexington, which is conservation land basically now but none of it has a Chapter 97 attachment to it. By doing that, by swapping a piece of land, or swapping the Chapter 97 uh, over to a piece of the property over in Lexington, that makes Mount Gilboa free to transfer, create it by deed, locked up in perpetuity as affordable housing component and we have our 2.2%, and that can't change. We don't add any more land, we don't subtract any more land. If it's one and a half percent of the existing land, that number is firm. I think we have very few units that are gonna expire. That's the only other hiccup is a lot of towns trying to approach 10% or try to approach one and a half percent. Expiring use takes that away, it's expiring use. This is all done with grant money, uh, federal funding, when it's paid off, it can revert the market rate. A lot of people don't realize that. These units disappear. And again, we'll file bills with the state that says, okay, any development under 40 b has to be deed restricted in perpetuity. Can't get it out of the housing committee. But most of the housing committee is made up of people from cities. They don't care. They're not threatened. As a matter of fact, they don't even use 40 b It's only towns that get picked up. So that's my story. If you have any questions, I can send you backup for all the material I've laid on you. That's the mission. <clears throat> have you been working with the manager of town council and planning department on this? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, planning department, uh, God love Laura, she, you know, she sends everything to DHCD. They are not our friends. <laughs> They'll give a negative reply to almost everything she gives to. And I take exception to it. Like I say, I'm already dueling the chief counsel at DHCD. But how can you say it can't be carried forward? It's on the deed. The deed carried all the prior restrictions with it. To this bill. These are two units that we're going to lose off of that count. They keep eroding the number up. So in 19, in, in 2000, left to 2000, when I first started this, uh, we moved from at that time, they said the town was at less than 1%. We haven't done anything, we've added some units, but basically we've updated the records. I had to go to the Secretary of State to get a copy of 
the substitute, sub, subsidized housing inventory. We've never been able to get our hands on it as an organization. Uh, in 2000, I saw the first copy of it, and that cost it 400 bucks. <laughs> 200 bucks was bought it. Since then, I haven't seen it. We went to Secretary Galvin with a request letter saying, what are the 40 B units? No reply. Waited two months. Got Secretary Galvin involved. Within a week, we got a copy of the SHI, which I now have. Did the numbers, and I'm saying, wait a minute, they told us they built 59,000 units of affordable housing. That don't add up, because there's 15,000 units of duplication in there, and a lot of other areas in there. The thing is a mess. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. Uh, and I also went to Secretary Galvin because we requested that we wanted a definition of what the Housing Appeals Committee defines as uh, the area that they make their decisions on. And they, they never would give us that, but finally through Secretary's office, they came back and said, oh yeah, but it's the hot area. Well, one of my members who is a retired federal investigator did a lot of work. He said, gee, what's the right number? Because the metropolitan statistical area, area that we're in is at 10.3%. So what's the goal? Is it 10% you know, to count? Is it 10% for the area? Make your choice because we're in a law, the chairman of the Housing Appeals Committee keeps making decisions on the basis that we need it uh, because of the area involved. Well, the area involved don't need it. It's at 10.3. So it's a forever battle. But that's, okay. that's the basis of the Warren article. Okay, Hope you like so it. This will be uh, a selectman's article. It's been pointed out there's no appropriation. Uh, but I, I think it's a fairly important article. So I don't intend to take, uh, ask for a vote today. But when we see what the selectmen uh, finally are going to recommend, we can take a look at it. If we want to, we can support it. That's after us later on. But you might as well get all your questions answered now. John? Yeah. Al, um, I wonder if we should hear from the town manager about the financial implications of this one article. Two things come to mind. One is, well, the building. The house is being rented out right now. Um, so there's rental income, net of whatever maintenance and upkeep is required. And then there's a, a it seems to me, a bigger item, which is that if, in lieu of transferring it to the housing authority, if this property was, I don't know, declared surplus, whatever, and, and sold on the open market. Um, it seems to me that it would generate some revenue. I, I talked to him actually a little bit this week about this um, because a year or two ago I tried to see if we could do that, carve it out and, and sell the thing. But we, the way we obtained this in the whole Mount Gilboa area was part of a grant program and uh, you know, even Solomon couldn't cut that out. Um, the, the reason this might be, uh, might have an ability to do it is you're, you're transferring it to another public entity uh, that's probably technically not part of Arlington, but sort of is. Um, so it thinks this might be legally doable. Whether it makes a difference or whether the selectmen want to move ahead with it, you know, we'll find out. Um, but we can't sell it. Um, we do get a rent for it. Uh, my guess is the manager would love to get rid of it. Um, going through the whole process of, of bidding it out every few years, uh, plus maintenance on it, if you've ever seen it. But, um, you know, the manager will be in next Wednesday. So you might want to, I usually, oh, you know, throw it open to questions for the manager. So you might want to ask that question. My, my other question is, do we know whether the board of the housing authority has taken this matter up and voted as to whether they would want to accept the property? I guess it's chicken and egg. John, can you go? answer up with the microphone? So kind of a chicken and egg situation, you know. Uh, do we 
established that we want to do this and then decided we're going to do it. And nothing says it's automatic. Uh, we asked for a warrant. Uh, a lot of things have changed. It comes before town meeting. I'm sure there'll be other things. As far as selling the property, could we clear it? In my way of thinking, uh, that'd be kind of insanity because you're only inviting more of you guys. I mean, you put that on the market, that's like gold. They put housing up there so fast, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't take the 10%. You're not gonna make 10% in my lifetime, you're not gonna make 10% in your lifetime. One and a half is the only way Alec does not escape 40B, or as a lot of people are beating on me, file another initiative petition, collect another 100,000 signatures, and put it on the ballot yeah. again. I think what John was thinking about is just the house, not the whole parcel. The house sits on a piece that's almost two acres. The way the deed's written, the property is 1.795 acres, which gives me my 2.2%. Yeah. Okay, well, that'd be interesting to find out. Charlie, John, can I ask you a question just for clarification? You keep saying how you won't make 10%. Um, how much affordable housing do we have in Rockland? You said that we had more. Uh, We're at five point three percent. And that includes uh, public housing. And, and we need. You said we need four thousand more units. At least the last time I worked, the numbers I said we'd have to build at least. But I thought 12. we only had fourteen thousand uh, residential units in Rockland. But the, in order to make the affordable count. Our affordable count is much less than that. I forget the exact number of units, I don't know if I have it with me, that are deemed affordable right now. But 10% of 40,000 is 1,400. Right. That's so, why I say, you know. So we don't need 4,000 more. You mentioned- Well, you have to build 4,000, only 20% of that is gonna oh, be affordable. Okay, you're, trying, you're saying if you build new, then 20% is affordable. It's insane. Just for curiosity, for example, the Wellington Street property that's owned by the Salvation Army, does yeah. that count? No, because it hasn't got the proper deed restriction filed with the deed. DHCD is brutal. They're in business to stay in business. They don't want to see towns getting off the hook for 40 uh, You know, I've been dueling with them yeah. for 10 years. <laughs> And they keep taking stuff away instead of helping us gain it. <laughs> okay, other questions, Alan? There's a, the, the, the church on the Downing Square in Westminster. They're applying for a, a portal, for a 40B. Great, great guy, 40B. Development there, is, is that uh, factor, has that been factored into the, to the uh, percentage? Would that push it over the 1.5%? Which one? The, uh, the church off Downing Square, off Westminster, that uh, they're part of the zoning board. Probably, I, I I didn't bring that list with me. I can tell you every piece of affordable. That's probably not Yeah, but that's all. We have them within, we have affordable units within some of our apartment houses that Arlington Housing Corporation purchased, uh, funded, uh, and those those count, okay? Right, but is, isn't that new to the inventory, if, if that happens? Well, the problem with that is I, my, when I first tried to do this, if it was in an apartment house, I counted, the whole land area. Uh, planning and DHCD came back and said, oh, no, no, no. That's only one of X number of units, so you can only take that percentage. <coughs> so I recalculated on that percentage, and it, you know, it reduces the number. But then I found out, wait a minute, if I go back to the master plan, that tells me exactly how many square feet in that unit, but it also has an additional factor that says, you can take this percentage of the common area and make it part of it. And strange as it seems, that figure sometimes is more than the actual dimensions of the unit. Yeah, I, mean, I think they're going after 100%, you know, I think seven affordable units, 100% of that, which I assume would be added, is not counted in the current inventory, but I just wanted to get that. They have, they have more ways of breaking it up. Uh, if you built an, a unit, a 40B development with all of the units, Rental units, yes. they count them off as affordable. Yeah, I, I think that's the plan. But only 20% of them are affordable. The rest of them aren't the great. I mean, that's, that's I a I think the plan is to have 100% affordable. That's what they want. 
Yeah, not there's not too many of those. Another question: If if the Gilbo, if Mount Gilboa were, were released from chapter from Article 97 and uh, transferred to the Housing Authority, would there would that open the possibility of tearing down the house and building a larger affordable unit on the site? That'd be up to the Housing Authority, the Town of Arlington, and whoever is involved. Uh, whatever is built there, uh, or what remains there. Uh, doesn't change the land area. Uh, the only as long as we don't sell it to a developer. So uh, the housing authority could potentially put up a 20-unit building on the property. Okay. But there again, if you've got the 2.2 percent, you decide what you want to allow and what you don't want to allow up there. Uh, it's it's probably the worst piece of legislation you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> What is that land zone? Do you know? But is it R1? I am pretty sure, but I'm not positive. But no, I got a stack of paper like that. I'm almost a stuck. Uh, well, my guess is it's probably R1. But, uh, R1 or R2. I'm sorry? R1 or R2. R2. Okay. No more. Are there any other questions for John? Okay, John, thank you very much for coming. We'll, not sure what we'll do, but we'll, we'll, we'll see you at town meeting. I have to sell this again at town meeting. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks oh. for the attention. <laughs> hey, anyone have any questions? I'm in the phone book. My number is in the town meeting list. Uh, I'll be more than happy to send you more details, more information, whatever. Gene, do you have a question? No, I guess it's more <laughs> for, for the chair. Is um, Regardless of what the selectmen do, is this really seems like this is beyond the scope of our duties as a finance committee. Um, and should just go back. And the, argue, and the reason I'll say that is um, uh, underlying the discussion, I guess, is a policy concept that, you know, the town has an obligation to restrict the, or, a, or, a, or a, some kind of moral charge here to restrict the land use of private property owners. And that is not a charge of the finance committee. I'm not, I mean, it, it seems like this is going outside the, um, the scope of what we do. Yeah. Well, then, regardless of what it's like. You know, the committee asked to hear it. No, no, no. I'm so happy you heard it. But yeah. Now that I'm there, we sort of said, well, let's wait till you hear what the select will do. And I don't, I don't know why we need to wait for that. Not, we've heard it. We understand it. It doesn't feel like it's our duty. But to do we, it. we don't, um, it, you know, first of all, it's going to be a select and main motion. All I'm saying is let the select do their work. You know, and when we see it, we can decide whether to approve it or not to approve it, but to favor it, not favor it, do nothing, whatever you want to do. But you've heard what it's all about. Okay. Okay, any other questions for John? Thank you, John. For Thank you. We all appreciate it. Taking the time to listen. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, let's make sure I do. Nope, that was it. Okay, with that, do we have some budgets? Yes. Okay, if everybody wants to grab their budget book. One of my handouts tonight is uh, the finance committee budget. It's revised from the uh, it's in the budget book. <laughs> Okay, so we want to substitute this for the one that's there. Yes. I used the material that uh, Charlie sent us. But the change is very simple. Um, <coughs> we would in, it would increase uh, our uh, administ administrative uh, assistance. Uh, Salary by two percent, along with everybody else's cost of living, and it would uh, return our expenses to what we've been using in past years, which is twenty-five hundred. So those two together 
come up with a bottom line of 12497 which is a 2.3% increase. Okay, so you're recommending $12,497 representing a 2.33% increase. Correct. Okay. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Any questions? Okay. All those in favor of $12,497, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Approved unanimously. Two ten fifty. Next, look under the legal. Um, that's on page uh, sixty sixty one. Sixty. Town Council and um, what page? 61. 61. 61. Okay. And basically, uh, this year, uh, it, it's the salaries and wages uh, that it, that is negotiated uh, pay raises and that, that, that increase in the budget. Um, we talked about uh, other uh, outside legal counsel for the town. And um, as, as we all know, that they have legal counsel for uh, the MUGA situation. That's a separate thing um, than town council. Um, we also asked on the salary detail uh, for a position, there's a, there's a stipend for, um, for the safety coordinator for $1,500. And what, in, in, in what, we determined that or they, they explained to us that um, she's taken on more responsibility, and a lot of it has to do with investigations and um, for arbitration, things like uh, sidewalk defects when, when uh, someone files uh, a court case against the town. And it's not only sidewalk defects, but I, one I, I, I never even thought of, but it, it's true trees. You know, limbs falling, the town owned, owned trees and whatnot. And uh, I, I thought of it the other day when we had the storm with all the limbs flopping back and forth. So, um, and potholes. And potholes, yeah, potholes mm -hmm. in the And on average, they have about 50 of these investigations per year, which they, they actually have to investigate and they, they have to rule whether, whether they're going to um, take action on the claim or not take action on the claim and what happens after that. So. Um, that's why there's a, a stipend increase for the, for the uh, that, that position, risk management um, stipend, they call it. How many years is 50? Uh, on average, about 50 a year, if you, if you count them all. And, uh, but they do have to physically have to go up. And, and there's all kinds of reports about all of it. Right so having said that, um, <coughs> legal uh, total budget is uh, 480,247. And that's what I'm presenting. Okay, so is your recommendation? Yes. $480,247? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any questions? Paul? So again, if you could make it, so the 6% increase in salary and wages, the top line. Right. So where, where is that coming from? Why, why is it 2%? <coughs> um, I, I believe, uh, Peter, wasn't there there's some type of 
contractual. It's not. It's not with, with the. Uh, oh. with the I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question again? So. On the top, the, you're the talking top about the top line. line. So top it, top it, line, right? Is right. It's going up six percent. Why is it six percent and not two percent like that? Supposed increase in wages. Well, you've got several steps. Right. You've got at least two two steps there. So there's another uh, forty-five hundred. Also, Paul, you see the the last line in that group called salary increases. Right. I believe that's supposed to be the net effect of the cost of living this current year. Right. So that's not included in this calculation. Right. I think if you added that into the 415, you'd get closer to it. <coughs> it still makes it about 4% even when you yeah. have that adjustment. <coughs> Okay, uh, Charlie and then John. Just, uh, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not sure this is directly a uh, question about the, the individual here, but just a question about how we're, how we're interpreting these numbers. If I look at um, the top line on the personnel page, uh, it says the fiscal year 2016 budget book was 138.9. Okay, now th th that must include longevity, right? No, that's the salary. That's salary without longevity. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. John? Yeah, two questions. Um, so are, is the expense line, is that outside council? Or is outside council somewhere else in the budget? Uh, I, I believe that that's the, um, out of the outside council. Okay. Yeah. And um, what, what is the, the stipend? The $9,000. Right, that was, that was um, put in last year. That was negotiated. It was mid, midway through the year for additional work that he, that he had been doing for quite some time. It was actually in, in another form, but the, the town manager and him last year discussed that they would, put, they would go into the that nine, put in a total of 9,000. Okay. That was halfway through the year last year. One advantage of having a stipend as opposed to uh, uh, a larger sal salary increase is um, when there's a new person in this position, it goes away. It doesn't automatically get the stipend, I, I hope. Now, is that a flat that's sum that's of great. money that he's going to get, or is that money set aside for additional work that he can earn? No, it's part of his. It's, 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 it's basically revenue. part of his salary. Right. Yeah. Okay, additional questions? Don't be shy. Okay, so motion has been made and seconded for 480,247. Uh, is there any further questions or discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 210.15. Okay, next. Next is the um, town clerk on page 63. 60, 65. Just, just for your information, uh, this year you know, we have a presidential primary, and you're going to see three ballots instead of two. We all know the Democrat ballot, the Republican. <coughs> There'll be a third ballot for the United Independent Party. The ballots had to be printed. They're blank. There are no people running in any of the, it, it, 
but in the end of in the United Independent Party, that doesn't mean that somebody can't take a ballot and write it something. But those ballots ha had to be included and they had to be printed. Um, and it has the presidential slot, party party chairman slot, male and female, and then then the ten uh, c committee members. But the, if you see a third ballot, that that's what it is. That's a new, new change. And in addition, come election time for the uh, general the presidential election in November, uh, we're going to have an, another type of election prior to that, one month before, called the, um, it's not a special, it's early election. And that's being uh, through the Secretary of State where people can vote early, and then those ballots will, will be kept for a month and then counted in, in the vote tally on, on election day. And they have not determined whether, if, whether we're going to have one vote, vote in place for that day or, or two. When I checked with Sleckler's office, they thought they were leaning more towards two. It would be on a, they told me on a Saturday, but the clerk's office thinks that the, the Secretary of State's going to dictate that it's going to be on a Tuesday. So if you want to be open all day, if you want to come vote early, but that's that's called the uh, early election for the, for the presidential election. So, and that's it has to be one month before the, the, the election in November. So that's a, that's another change this year. So, so there's not a, there's a uh, unpredictable uh, cost associated with that. Right. <coughs> she, has, she doesn't know how to. Estimated because yeah. she doesn't know what the rules are yet. Right, it, it, it's still, I guess it, the jury's still out on how they're going to uh, do this, but they are going to do it. That, that's a fact. So, um, so and well, such as tonight, they were open, the clerk's office was open tonight at 8 o'clock for uh, final night of registering if you wanted to vote in the presidential primary, March 1st. And again, it's the same thing that's generating uh, is the uh, salary and wages um, that would go cost of living negotiated contracts and whatnot. And the um, we kind of Peter and I asked some questions about the data processing expenses and and, and the consulting fees. And apparently, up at the, at the comptroller's office. They have these two items, 5203 and 5219, in a, in a different um, stated category. One is maintenance and furniture, and um, the other one is, is, is stenotyping. stenotyping. It's like, it, it, they're different categories, but it, in the clerk's, um, the way she presents it, it's data processing expenses and consulting. So, <coughs> So with that, uh, budget figure of 272,816. Might mention I'm going to miss this, the consulting that's line for, item, that's for what? Stenographic. Stenographic. <coughs> when, you, when, when you check with the comptroller's office, that's, it's listed as stenographic rather than consulting. Because we asked the same question and, and Stephanie had to uh, go back to the comptroller to get an explanation on that. And when she, Email us, that's what she explained. This is a town meeting. Yeah. For town meeting. For town meetings. Right. So they're only going to get paid for the number of town meetings we have, right? So, right. So another reason to keep, keep town meetings <laughs> <laughs> down. <laughs> and to go late on the last night. Okay, are there any questions? Other questions? Okay, David, so are you recommending 272-816? Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, so motion's been made and seconded for 272,816. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. 2, 10, 15. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16.
Okay, and the last one that I have is Board of Registrars, and that's for 65857 which I recommend as presented. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, maybe second it. Oh, is there any questions? Perry? Yeah, the uh, increase in salary and wages is entirely due to the election. It, uh, well, it, it's also contractual here in the year too, but it, yes, it's part of the uh, election. It's well, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, there's a, there, the contractual increase. No, 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 it doesn't have anything to do with the election yeah, entirely. No. If you look but, on the detail page, there's, it's flat. It, that's the 2% for the current year that's not included in the first line. What's the step? Plus a step, right. There's a step also. Okay. So what we should be looking at is apples to apples is the difference between the budget book and the base. Budget book for 16 and the base for 17. That increase should be 2%. But then they add the step. <coughs> It's a lot more than two percent. It's a lot more, yeah. It's going. I mean, a two percent would be about a thousand dollars. This is going up about thirty-five hundred. Round numbers. Well, the assistant registrar. Yeah. I also do believe that that, but that's that what, was position was. That's what G four uh, six. That's what grade four steps six actually. Is. So you're saying that includes the step? Uh, the the, the um, pay plan includes the step, yes. Yeah. But not next year's step. Right. Okay, I'm confused. So. What's the difference between the budget book for 16 and the base for 17? Is there a, somehow a step built in? <clears throat> Is it a step plus 2%? I, I believe it was a reclassification oh. for, that, for that position. Yes, um, yeah, and the reclassification from last year is an $1,853 increase for the assistant registrar of voters. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. That's what it was. Includes. Thanks for helping me out. Classification from 2015. Uh, okay. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you, Paul, for helping out. Okay, so motion is made and seconded for $65,857. Any further discussions? Dean. Just to confirm, what's our, I guess I'll call it cap on appointing authorities to go up? The increase, because this, we're on an appointing authority right now. So just to make sure, I mean, I just did a back of the envelope, and I think the whole, both about the budget flow combined 2.8. But that's lower than our, what we're looking at, right? Because I think we said it was 3.25 on the town side. Is that right? Just to confirm. Um, the, the manager's going to be giving us some uh, probably amended budget sheets. Um, and the long-term planning committee is meeting tomorrow morning. But uh, we, we should be targeting three to three and a quarter. Uh, I think we'll get some more information on that uh, overall. And I think usually when the manager does it, he looks at all, all the non-school budgets. 
and, and you know, puts it under his cap. I think uh, we, we try to go through into a little bit more on the other appointing authorities and make sure they're staying reasonably close too. Uh, now this is, Six four two. What was the they four, total up to two eight? I get it. Yeah, it is under three and four, three three and four. Okay, so if you add the two together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor of sixty five eight fifty seven? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Favorable action. Unanimous. Two ten sixteen. Okay, that's okay. all I have at this time. Peter and I will be meeting with the uh, selectman and the town manager tomorrow. Okay, that sounds good. Peter, do you have any? Yeah, planning and community development. Page 77. On page 77. changes from last year. The, uh, there are lots of offsets from uh, funds that are, are not uh, the general fund, <coughs> but they're the same kinds of things as in the past. Uh, there are, there is a, uh, I believe there are two vacant positions. Oh no, I guess that's one of them that filled. So they have, there's one vacant position. Salary line goes down because the new planning director is getting more money, getting less money than the previous one was making. That's right. Right. For once. <laughs> and she starts, I think, next week on Tuesday. Laura Winner, um, we, we talked to Laura Winner, who is the temporary uh, department head. She had uh, boosted herself on her straps and was well, in, well informed on, on the budget. So we recommend 410,639 as printed. Okay, uh, Dean? On salaries and wages on the top line, 477-9780. That, am I seeing it wrong or is that a transposition error from the, from the back sheet? Which number are you, are you the 477-978 you mean? Sure, it's 477-978 on the cover. Yes. And on the back, it, Four seven nine seven seven eight. Or am I seeing that wrong? No, it's it right. Now. But the bottom <coughs> line after the offset is correct. I checked that number. Let's see. It's, uh, so is, it, is it going down correctly still? Mm -hmm. If you take four seven five one thirty one, the total of the base. The, uh, the step in longevity. Not the step, just the step, not the longevity. 475 plus 2 is 477. Wait, what? Are you, are you following me? This longevity is separate. Repeat that again. If you see subtotal under base, <laughs> Is four seven five one thirty one? Yep. And then you add the step of two eight four seven. You get four seven seven nine seven eight. They just add the four seven. Oh, seven, it's presented eight, slightly eight. different. All right. Yeah, Fine. Okay. Years. Yeah. Well, no, it's different than on the other one. I thought. 
Oh, there's no longevity on the um, one we just did. Ah, uh, I get it. Thank you, Peter. Well. Okay, any additional questions? Charlie, did you have one? No. Okay, Alan? Uh, just a reminder of the, uh, the book. Um, there is the Home Fund Officer. The Home Fund is a, uh, a bundle of state money that's uh, made available to a consortium of towns, of which we're one, um, for uh, affordable, I think it's primarily for affordable housing. interest, the, uh, the uh, Conservation Commission has uh, a $10,000 uh, general, uh, $10,534 in their wetland fees fund. That's where the uh, offset for oh, 3000 something is coming from. Three two zero two, the conservation offset. What? Yeah. You're talking about the, the three thousand two hundred two conservation yeah. offset. Yeah. yeah. I still seem to see, you know, I'm going through a lot of these, and the budget book is what we appropriated from and last year. Here. So let's say economic development coordinator, 87, we appropriated last year, 87, 147. Right. And the new base is 92, 336. Right. So that's like a $5,000 increase versus what should be like a two, you know, which is a, 6% increase versus what's supposed to be is a 2% increase. I, you know, I sort of see this down the line. Maybe I'm missing something, but unless there were... If you take the grade and the step and go to the pay plan, that's what you find there, then that number. You see the 92336. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any additional questions? Uh, going back uh, to the question you just raised, Alan, wasn't that a new tire as well? On that? No, no, she's worked here for quite a few years. On the um, economic development coordinator? Oh, oh no, I thought you were talking about Wiener. No, not him. Because the 87, so that should include all the steps, that's everything except longevity, which mm -hmm. is a separate line item. And then. The only th thing they should get is a, a 2%. But once for some reason the 2% weren't built in before, but I don't think so. I think. Yeah. Uh, the 2 percent's not in the budget book. Is that what you mean? Well, if, if the difference between 16 and 17 should be a 2% raise, these are all higher. Well, it should be 4% because it's two years. 
is the current year, which is not included in the in the uh, salaries that we voted. It was included in the warrant article. Eighty-seven, one forty-seven is what you'll find there. It's, it's, that's right. That's in the budget. For, that's in the budget last year. Right. So, see, I thought these people were all over three years. I think there's a step also. Now we vote. Okay, I stand corrected. We voted all the contracts in 2015. Yeah. So. In effect, you'd be getting four percent. Right. That's what. That in general, that's what they all show. They all show. Okay. Okay. Stand corrected. Just wanted to make sure. Wait, that's going to be. Yeah, that may be an issue for us in our report. I don't know where you want to go. Okay. okay. So we'll. But they're not all four percent. Hmm. I think that's a challenge. Some of them are four, and some of them are six. Uh, you know that, that's right. But. Right, because the second person on the chart and the third person on the chart have the same FY 2017 base, but they don't have the same FY 2016 base. So in order to get there, one has to go up six and the other one has to go up four. Exactly, right. So I think the question is, why does one go up six? That's the question I think you're trying to get, the chair's trying to get at. So we need to ask the manager whether, since he had a little um, wiggle room because of the lower salary for the director, and mm -hmm. they give some merit increases to uh, the, a few of the other staff members. But one has longevity. One doesn't. Well, they're basically the same. They're, they're capped out at grade right. 12. Right. right. And then Laura has longevity. You can only do that on the, on, on the end schedule. That's what you're talking about, yeah. Right. Of course, it'd be a little more than two and two because it'd be two plus then two on us. So I don't know, maybe it'd be 4.1 or 4.2 percent or something like that. 2,000. Okay. Uh, okay, any, any other questions? Okay, so uh, do I have a motion for 410 639? So moved. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 210 16. And that might be something to check just as you go through your, you know, the personnel and, uh, you know, double check it against the paint classification plan. And if there's something, you know, like out of the ordinary, uh, uh, you know, we obviously please raise it with your people. Okay, Peter. No. <laughs> Concerning the redevelopment board. Um, Except so right after that one, right after planning. If you go to page 81, you see that they, the redevelopment board proper is, uh, doesn't have any, doesn't have any salaries, uh, and it's, it's uh, level funded at its expenses. But then, the way the budget book's laid out this year, they've got a page which says general fund, general fund rental properties, and then it, that deals with farm and gifts and, uh, and the uh, Dallin Library. However, the planning department doesn't uh, Doesn't really have anything to do with these those buildings anymore. They're, the, the manager is doing those directly. Or I suppose that the uh, properties people are, are are dealing with them. 
we haven't met with the manager yet. So I don't know what to say about the rental properties. We could vote the <coughs> we could vote vote the rest the uh, redevelopment board proper. Uh, in the past, the the budget has shown those rental properties as part of the re which I are formally are development board responsible for and shown them. <coughs> there is one salary of um, um, the uh, all-purpose maintenance man that uh, takes care of those properties. He's shown there to give. Now, do we have revenues on this? And, and last year they finally put the revenues in and this year they aren't in. That's, a, that's one of the things that okay. we lost. When, Okay, so why don't we, uh, we set the uh, rental properties on the, you know, just leave it and you report back when you, when you get the information. I don't see any reason we can't vote the redevelopment board. Uh, 10,800 is the same as the prior year. <coughs> is that what you're recommending? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on that? Look, if you dig into the sheets, the revenues are here. I'm sorry. The revenues are in the sheets if anyone would like to know what they are. They're not on the paper, they're in Excel files. I'm sorry, where are they? In the Excel files. The oh, paper. they're in the Excel files? Yeah. So if you'd like to know the revenues, I have the numbers. Where are they in the, in the, in the Excel files? I, they're on the third sheet that's called Rental Property Budget. Oh, they're all by themselves? There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sheet for rental property budget that has the details of the rental properties that feed into it. Oh, good. So they gave them on the Excel files, but not on the uh, printed. In the printout. Yeah. Okay, so they do have something. Okay, but back to the redevelopment board. It's basically the uh, advertising yeah. office expenses, etc. cetera. Uh, is your motion for 10 8? So okay, second? <coughs> okay. Any questions on just the redevelopment board, 10,800? Paul? They, they do seem to over budget that a bit every year, but it's a pretty small amount. So um, just looking at the <coughs> 14 and 15 actuals. Yeah, they don't spend much money. You say they're over budget, Paul? <laughs> They, they over their budget is higher than they oh than their expenses it's yeah. three times what they spend mostly in the other categories. Have you met with them on anybody with the manager on this, Peter? Uh, no, we haven't met with the manager yet. Well, you know, it, it's it's a good point. Uh, you know, if, having a little extra money in there is not a sin, but usually we don't see it. <coughs> of uh, appropriating three times the expenditures, uh, even though it just goes back into free cash. Why, why don't you ask if you thought this could be trimmed a bit? Okay. It's small dollars, but what, one, it does seem. One possibility is, that, as you noted, the, the number of warrant articles on zoning was a lot less the last few years because of the master plan work. And, Maybe this this line of printing ballots and bylaws will go up this year because of all the zoning things that are coming along. Good question. Why don't you ask that? If they need the 10-8, they need the 10-8, but they haven't, certainly haven't spent it. And always make it a point: never criticize the department head for not spending money. <laughs> Okay, uh, are you have anything else, Peter? No. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any other budgets? Paul? We have the police oh. budget and second. Oh. Uh, well, somebody wants the table until Peter comes back. I'll move the table. Okay, do you have a second? Second. 
Second. Second. All those in favor of tabling, please say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay. So that's tabled. But right to did have that other motion on the table. Okay, does anybody else have any budgets? Paul? I have the police budget. Page 123. I guess we could really get rid of community safety. Yes. <laughs> yeah, just your So after wandering through the construction going on in the, is, is it still going to be called <coughs> the community safety building no, I, after they do the work? No, I don't think it's, got, I think it's going to be called the police station, but that's the only people there. Right. So after wandering through the construction of the police station, we, we found the chief and we were able to meet with him the other day. Um, just uh, a couple notes about where they stand on the current fiscal year. Um, the, the chief believes they um, will not have any need for any reserve fund transfer. Um, <coughs> at this point, it looks like they'll have a surplus in overtime that, that may change because of some things coming along, but they also have a, uh, they're also underspending the <coughs> salaries and wages because they currently have six vacancies. Um, they do have six recruits going to the academy in March. Um, so, that, so they will be on the payroll, but they still have to spend overtime because they are, because um, they will be trained and then up to, to full speed for about nine months. Um, uh, luckily, he has no retirements this year that would add a big chunk, but he anticipates in probably January next year, there will be a retirement of a longtime lieutenant who has the deferred money from the 90s, so it's going to be kind of an expensive retirement that hasn't actually been budgeted for, for next fiscal year. So, Uh, the big change that, that shows up in salaries and wages is that they are adding two police officers. So, Alan, you'll, the, the captains, lieutenants, sergeants numbers stay the same, but you should add two to the patrolmen, bringing it up to 49 patrolmen. And uh, as the manager said in, the, in his introduction here to the budget book, those uh, police officers are to uh, finally have two officers full-time on traffic issues. Uh, the chief said that we're one of the few towns around that has no one dedicated to traffic. So they're finally going to do that. Um, at one point in our discussion, I asked, just just totally hypothetical, if he had $50,000 more to spend, where would he spend it? And he said he would do it on a third traffic officer. So he thinks he can make some uh, significant improvement in uh, people obeying the traffic laws in Arlington by introducing these, these two new officers. I mean, like directional? Mm -hmm. You mean like directional, using directionals? Um, what kind of enforcement? Yeah, he, he anticipates um, stopping people and mostly giving out warnings. And just by um, that process, he thinks that people who regularly drive through Arlington will start to, you know, sort of expect that there could be a police officer around the corner, and that they will hopefully get in the habit of. Uh, obeying the laws a little better. I'm, I guess I meant what kind of, um, what does he see as the biggest violations of traffic that need to be curtailed? Um, Speeding, crosswalks, or anything that sort? Well, um, I guess it was, it, it was the pedestrian crosswalk, crosswalk safety mm -hmm. that, that he certainly has gotten the most uh, attention over the last few years with a few uh, fatalities on Mass Ave and uh, 
Um, so that, that's the, the one thing he did, he did mention. Thank you. Um, uh, so uh, going through the lines, um, again, because of these uh, vacancies that will not be completely filled until the fall, um, or actually, yeah, till, till actually, I guess, nine months after March 1st, so I guess that actually comes to the, the end of the year. Um, that's why he expects more overtime in the coming year, and the, that's why the overtime number went up. Um, all the other personnel expenses are just a, the minor 2% increases they have. Uh, on the expenses, as we hope to see in other budgets, the uh, auto gas and oil is going down with the get price of gas. Um, the numbers for uh, uniform allowance and firearms and ammunition are, are going up, again, just to equip the new recruits with the uniforms they'll need and the uh, ammunition they're going to expend <coughs> when they're at the academy to, to get their full firearm certification. Uh, the $20,000 is listed as teleprocessing. That, that's really IT expense within the department as um, they are getting more and more automated, which I think is a good thing and makes better use of the people. Uh, one of the things that that covers is some uh, additional licensing for their new online reporting system that, that allows citizens to report minor uh, crimes, uh, accidents, whatever, online, instead of having to send an officer out to actually take the report down, which he says can consume like an hour of work for an officer between the time they have to go and interview the people, and then they have to go back and type everything in. So uh, that's where that uh, major expense increase comes from. Uh, the one other thing he talked about is on the, on the next page, which is the finish of the expense lines, the, the psychological testing number that's there. Um, he believes that's, that's actually going to be um, somewhat under budgeted. Uh, the 3,000 was budgeted just on the idea that for each of these six new recruits, they have to do $500 worth of initial psychological testing whenever an officer starts. Um, but this doesn't include money that sometimes is needed when there's officers have. Um, uh, show problems with uh, doing their jobs. And he has an arbitration suit that will be coming up. To, he will have to have the, the psychological testers, outside contractor, uh, come in and testify in the arbitration. So he's likely to overspend <coughs> that account in the coming year. Uh, he also talked about um, uh, the maintenance of the building. Once they do finish the work, which we hope will be this summer, um, he uh, will have the, uh, he's going to work really hard at maintaining the building instead of letting it go to pot like happened with the building before. Um, now, uh, I'm not clear. He, he says the, the janitor still shows up under his budget and it has not yet been moved to the facilities budget. Is that, I don't know whether anyone knows more about that, um, but it, we assume that at so, some point soon in the future that will change. Right. <coughs> yeah, well, um, there is a new facilities manager and um, all of the existing Facility budget is supposed to move under her. And that probably will be next fiscal year. Okay. But in fact, um, I think 
that she is, during fiscal year 17, supposed to be actually managing these people, even though the lives are in the okay. different departments. And I can add to that. And you're correct. And there are additional employees in the facilities department budget this year reflecting the plan of bringing everything into this one department. So they could put two custodians in a building for a couple weeks and then, or shift right. the facility people right. around. And if there's a leak in this building, she can pull someone <coughs> and keep track of everyone's time. Okay. Rather than having the police chief have to keep track of the custodian and the school department person and the principal keeping track of somebody else. That's the plan. Sounds good. Okay, Paul? Uh, so, going back to the the first page then, um, I'm recommending the uh, budget as printed, which is a total of $7,972,573. <coughs> okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, questions? So we're, you know, the, the big change is, uh, we are adding two patrolmen uh, to focus on traffic control and enforcement issues, pedestrian safety, et cetera, et cetera. Considering that a few people die, that might be a, a reasonable use of resources. Uh, any questions or discussion? So, and just one other note, if, you, if you're looking through the actual personnel list of patrolmen, it's listing 51 patrolmen. Two of them will be promoted to sergeant, and you see there are two vacancies on sergeant where the only dollar <coughs> amount associated with the vacancy is the difference between the patrolman's salary and the sergeant's salary. So while it looks like there are 51 patrolmen, <coughs> Budgeted, it's it's actually really 49 patrolmen and a full um, nine sergeants. Okay, so Paul and Alan, you'll make sure on our thick comp report all that is explained with. Uh, folks, we'll probably add it together. Okay, John and Charlie. Yeah, going back to the custodian, um, how, how come there there's nothing? There, there are no uh, expenses, salary, or otherwise. Oh, maybe it has been moved to the, uh, the facilities. I can dig into that. Yep, custodian is gone. And um, 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 the other thing is, I thought um, crossing guards under no, police? no, so they're somewhere they're else. In, I think they're in the school budget. They yeah, okay, they're still. Yeah, they haven't been on the police since the initiation of Proposition Two and a Half. The police that want coordinates that, but it's under the school budget. No. Okay, Charlie. Uh, yes, Paul. Um, did they uh, comment on why the why the uh, uniforms, badges, and, badge and gloves are up so much, and why the ammunition is up so much? I'm, I'm sorry. Why what? The increases in the uniforms, badges, and gloves looks like more than two people. It's six people. Oh, it's six people. Okay. Yeah, one people. I can't I, they I, just trade uniforms? Right, I guess <laughs> they, <laughs> they used to. Oh, six people, I understand. Right. The, the, the they used to. Not, uh, yeah. right. they're, they're, actually, and I, I should, there are six people who are going to the academy now, but that, that actually does not include, there, there actually will be eight people, because then there, the six people are just to fill vacancies, and then there'll be two additional people okay. with the uh, new budget. And that's the same thing for the end of the year. Right, got it. So David, you don't think the, the, these new young guys can take, use the same uniforms as the 55-year-old guys are? Not anymore, no. Leave them behind? They used to actually have, they had a room with, with 
uniforms, used uniforms. And, and the new officers had to have to pick, some didn't fit, some didn't fit, you know, this one that. I worked for two weeks without a uniform and carried a gun up and down the street. Went along with, there was 12 of us, we didn't have uniforms. So if there was 12 people walking up and down Mass Ave with guns on, people didn't know who the hell they were. <laughs> you go to Texas, everybody gets to know. <laughs> okay, uh, are there any additional questions? Grant? I just want to make a comment, actually. I don't know, um, I was very surprised. I stopped in the police station in, um, well, I stopped in to pick up a, a traffic uh, report, and they were all in the uh, in the um, uh, Cusack Center next door in the basement, and they're like 10 by 10, looked like an old fashioned steno pool. And every single person there is like shoulder to shoulder, and they're all writing reports, they're all doing. I don't see how they could accomplish anything in there. Yeah, it's, level, and, and it's just that's an un unbearable environment to be in. So I'll be, you know, we, we'd like to meet over there, but I'll be. Glad they'll they'll be glad to get their building. Yes, <laughs> they actually have more room where they are now than what they did have. No, I mean they like. No, that was incredible. I mean it's just eye opening. Thank you. I think the project's supposed to be finished in July or August. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions on the police budget? Okay. Motion has been made and seconded for seven million nine seventy two five seventy three. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. Ten sixteen. Okay. Any other budgets? Okay. Any other budgets for uh, from anybody else? It is nine eleven. Well, that's we're considering the budget we just did. Uh, okay. Next Monday is. Well, it used to be Washington's birthday, now President's Day, uh, so we will not meet. So Monday, go skiing, take the day off. Uh, on February 17th, we have two articles. One is uh, tourism, Article 44, and the other, the manager's coming in on a couple of articles. So save up all your manager questions. Now, uh, I'd like to get some budgets for next Wednesday, because you know I don't think that will take a huge amount of time. Uh, the 22nd, as you can see, is the conservation water bodies coming in. Uh, arts and culture, they want some additional money. The capital budget capacity, that's an article, a 10 register voter article, uh, dealing with the uh, uh, school capacity. So uh, uh, it's a little early because the enrollment task force is not meeting again until February 23rd. So. Uh, and then the next few are, uh, are open. So if uh, some of you could please get budgets in for the 17th, that would be great. Uh, Paul? We should have the fire budget. Okay, that would be great. Uh, are there any other questions? Any other business before the meeting? Meeting adjourned.